Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Be Is For Build. In this episode, we're gonna focus on finishing the repairs to the two door panels, and then we're gonna start paint prep on the entire car. Now Lotus recommends painting all the parts off of the car, which is handy because we have all the parts, well, easily taken off of the car. Nothing's glued on yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint prep everything, and then in the next following episode, we're gonna start painting. We're gonna paint everything a single stage white, so please don't send me a thousand emails saying you forgot the clear. That's not what single stage means. So we're gonna paint a single stage white that's a very, very close match to the Lotus factory color. And then once all that's painted, and not the whole car by the way, the roof, the rear hatch, and the rear uh, spoiler, those are black. So we're gonna paint everything else which we have right now, except for the rear bumper which is on its way, hopefully it'll be here really soon. That'll all get painted in white, and then after that's done, I'm gonna vinyl wrap it all in white. Yep. I'm vinyl wrapping it because I want to give it a shot. So I'm painting it because I want to have a good base for the vinyl wrap and I want to have a backup option if I don't like the way the vinyl wrap turns out or something like that. And uh, you need to have the same color underneath so when the vinyl wrap is applied that all the body panels look the same color. Um, so that's what we're doing. That's the game plan. We're going to go paint prep, eventually paint, and then eventually vinyl wrap, which may be much longer down the road. It's not going to be like we're going to paint and then immediately vinyl wrap. So that's the game plan. Stay tuned. All right, so the first step for this door is there are some gouges here, 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 and one way back here. And these are just basically to the top layer of paint and a little bit of uh, body filler or what do they call it, like fiberglass glaze. So they're not a big deal, but they do need to be, uh, so I'm gonna clean them up with some sandpaper, paint prep, and then I'll lay a thin layer of body filler over all these things before I start for a final sanding on this door panel. All right, so we sanded, uh, paint prepped, and then laid a layer, of, a really thin, thin layer of Bondo on here, body filler. Um, I screwed up this part a little bit, so I might need to come back and redo that after I sand. I won't know, be able to know until I sand everything down and see how it looks. So while this dries, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is slide the car to the far side of the shop. I'm gonna try and get it where I would want it uh, for when we paint and uh, do a breakdown on the front end, take off the front end, the clamshell, and the side panels, and find some room for everything here in the shop. All right, everything's all moved around the shop. I got a lot more room to work, and this is dried up. I realized I forgot to do that part, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the first level of hand sanding on this part and that part, and then I'll come back in and do that, and if I need any touch-up work over here, like I thought I might, I'll do that as well. So we got some body filler right here and we got our high filler primer everywhere else. It's time to go across every piece of this that we want to repaint with sandpaper and sand it up and scuff it up so the new paint will stick. So I'm probably going to start with a 320 or a 400 grit. Um, I'm going to start with a 320, get through this high filler primer. If it feels like everything is smooth, we're definitely at the point where you can't see any blemishes, but sometimes you can feel them. So we'll get through till everything's smooth and then I'll come in with 400 and I'll come in with 600 and then this panel will be finished and ready to be painted. All right, this door panel is done. We went through it with the uh, 320, then the 400, then the 600, so it's real nice and smooth and it is ready to be sealer primer and painted when the time comes. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside in the pile of stuff that's done and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the other door and throw it on here and we'll do the same process that we did with these pieces over here and over here where we will get down, clean up the damaged areas and then body fill over them. We 
got everything all cleaned up and the first repair that we're going to do is there's a little crack down here in the corner. It took a little extra damage so I'm going to go ahead and lay that fiberglass uh, reinforced body filler in here. So uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of used the paint or the tape to kind of like dam it up and I'm just going to fill this whole area in with that stuff. So you guys remember when I told you I was going to show you putting the fiberglass on? Well, I forgot to turn the camera on. So that's on there. That's all firmed up. So now we're going to flip this over and start working on using body filler on the other side. All right, the Bondo has dried up, so I'm gonna come through with the box sander just to knock down the high points, and then I'm gonna come through with the power sander. We're gonna do the same thing we did before, 320, 400, and then 600. All right, it turns out I had to do a, another layer of high filler primer on this door panel and I might, I'm seeing something that looks a little deep. We'll see, I might have to do one more. So that's gonna need to sit up and dry. While that does, these vents can be removed. I think, I've never done it before, um, but there's a bunch of screws around the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump under there and take all those screws off and see if I can get the vents off of here because it'd be real nice to have this to be one big piece that all needs to be painted. All right, this door is done. The story is paint prep. So this is pretty cool because the, the two doors were the main things that needed repairs. Uh, the things we have left are rear clamshell, front clamshell, two side panels, and the front bumper. And none of those need any serious repairs. The front clamshell's got a little bit of touch up I need to do, but um, so that's good. So I'm gonna move this door over there. And then uh, the clamshell uh, is, the front clamshell is what I'm gonna go for next. Unfortunately, after I took those vents out, it lost some kind of structural rigidity some support in there. So I'm gonna have to be real careful about how I set that up so it's being supported on all the sides and it's not trying to support itself. So that'll be tricky, but I'll do my best. All right, so yesterday and today I did a little bit of touch up on the front end of this and that's all good. It needs a light little sanding there to round off an edge and then a little bit of light sanding right here. And then we're good to uh, do the scuffing up of the OEM paint for paint prep. So I'm gonna go ahead and bust this whole thing out. Then I'm gonna set it back on the ground and set up our next piece. This front clamshell is done. It's all prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna set that aside. Then we're gonna grab the bumper and I'm gonna start by removing and taping off all the carbon fiber bits because you don't wanna accidentally hit those with sandpaper. It'll scuff up your clear over the carbon fiber. So yeah, we'll get that set up. I've seen a couple of really tiny imperfections on there. So I'm gonna repair the imperfections and uh, start sanding. So what we were just doing there is we were uh, fixing some tiny little imperfections in the bumper. So this bumper is made uh, from a mold. And um, like anytime you order a fiberglass bumper on a website, it's gonna say professional installation recommended and small modifications may be necessary. And uh, so what happens is they throw this thing into a mold and when you get these tight angles right here, like like maybe a peak like that, you have to imagine there's a, there's a piece of material kind of like all around this that they're shoving this material into. And sometimes a little bit of air will get trapped in there. So I wanna kind of try and show you an example of what that looks like, but the camera does not wanna focus on this, uh, this area. <laughs> Okay, here, let's try this one over here. So if we focus in here, 
you can see that there, so at that little point, there was just a, 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 a tiny little pit. So I just, you just can kind of like micro glob on some body filler and then you're gonna sand almost 100% of that off just leaving a little bit of a pit. So you'll see a little circle of body filler left over. So I went along the edge here and like there's a tiny one there and a tiny one there. So these are the, and then over here there was like a small little kind of like dip. So you, you can, you put on extra because you wanna sand away everything that you don't want but you don't wanna have to put on another layer. So that's kind of the deal with these and um, it's not hard work to do at all. Anybody can do it and it's, it's really simple. Overall, this bumper's been great, great um, fitment and build quality and everything like that. So I'm real happy with that. So once that stuff dries up, I'm gonna tape off this other side. By the time I'm done taping off this other side, it'll dry up. Uh, the light, I got the light out on this side. I couldn't get the light out on the other side. <clears throat> but, um, so we'll tape that off and then we'll start sanding. I'll probably just start sanding on the bottom and then work my way up to the top. Once I get to the top, that fi uh, body filler will be dry and we'll just sand through it and then this part will be done. All right, real quick before I move on to hand sanding this, I wanted to give you guys a couple uh, not pro tips. Um, so when you're, when you're working with something that's got primer on it rather than factory paint, be aware that the primer is gonna, you're gonna grind through a lot more material with the sandpaper than you would with the paint. It's just a softer material, it's meant to be sanded down, so it's gonna fly off a lot faster. If you're using a power sander like I am, um, ideally you would have one that's vented like this one and it would go into a bag. I'm, I'm not that tricked out right now. But what you need to have is, I think this is called a um, media pad or something. So you see the, the sanders right here. Normally when you buy it from the store, that's where it ends. And then you have the squishy pad in the middle. These are important. These are really important. They help the sander kind of go around bends and not dig in hard angles on your sanding. Um, that really ruined the plan A, B, or Z a little bit when I did that. And I had to come back and do a lot more deep sanding with that pad on there. So you need a pad in between your sanding uh, base and then your sander. And uh, when you come to angles, like you'll notice that I was kind of coming around the front here and coming down here, but I never really hit this corner. All the corners you're gonna burn through really, really fast just because of the way that sanding works and, and the surface area. And so I stay completely away from all the angles like this I would never do, this I wouldn't do, you wouldn't wanna do this. So anytime you're like, like, don't do this, just come back through with the hand sander and just lightly handle it by hand. That way you don't risk just completely burning through and down to your raw material. All right, that's all my sanding tips. I'm gonna hand sand this thing and finish it up. Next up is the side panels. Uh, it looks like Lotus has already sanded these down with looks like some 200 or 300 level sandpaper. So they're pretty smooth. So we're just gonna come in with our 400 or 320 and then 400 and just uh, smoothen these out a little bit. And I'm only gonna be sanding on the areas that we plan on painting over. Uh, the parts that we wanna glue, I wanna leave just the way they are because that's the factory fresh fiberglass and uh, I wanna do fiberglass to fiberglass when we do our gluing. So I'm gonna leave those completely fine and anything that we're gonna paint and that might be seen by the car, I'm gonna sand those all down and smooth them up. All right, just one more panel, and then we get to move on to the fun one, which is the rear clamshell, which should be really exciting. Ugh. Pretty light for the whole side of a car. Um, you'll notice I'm wearing respirator. Anytime you're uh, sanding fiberglass, it's real important. Definitely wear a respirator. thing I gotta do is go get that rear clamshell from over there off the wall and try and set it on these four sawhorses, which is gonna be really, really tricky because it's bigger than I am. But um, anything that isn't just dropping it on the ground or accidentally stepping on another part, I'm going to consider a win. All right, we're on and stable. This thing isn't going anywhere. So I'm just gonna start on this side and then I'll switch the camera over and we'll work on this side. Although there's no room to work over there. We'll figure that out. Um, there's some tape residue over here I'm gonna get off. And then remember, we're just trying to scuff up the uh, clear coat and stuff on this factory paint so that our primer sealer will stick onto it.
right, the rear clamshell is all sanded up. I'm going to try and walk you guys around, but it's very hard to not step on other car parts. Um, so you got the filler cap over here, um, and everything, you know, this, this is a really good quality part. If you guys remember, I picked this part up actually for $2,600 a long time ago, including shipping. And uh, that's a little bit more expensive than just one of the side panels of the car that I ended up getting. So this was a good deal. This was a good, uh, good buy. So um, yeah, it's all, it's all good. We need to repair that little spot down there. I'm gonna end up doing that later. Um, one thing to note, you know, people say it is all in the prep and this has definitely been a lot of prep. I've spent just shy of 20 hours, probably about 18 hours over the last two days, just sanding these parts. Um, we still have masking and setting up of the, you know, the whole shop to do and a lot of masking, but you know, it's true. There's a lot of work goes into the prep just to spray something for about, I don't know, 30 minutes. All right, guys, I know what you're thinking. You're like, damn, Chris, you cleaned up fast. Yeah, after the last episode, I kind of had to come in here and film a new outro. So paint prep is completed. Um, over the, In the next episode and over the next few days, we will start painting these parts white, and uh, hopefully our bumper will arrive and we can get that painted along with everything else that needs to be white. Um, if you missed out on last episode, good news from Lotus. Parts are being ordered and they are coming. You know, sometimes these things take time with uh, shipment times and stuff like that, but they're they're on their way. We found we've we've found a hole and we're going for it. Is that right? I don't know. Um, tomorrow there's an episode uh, revealing the results of the Copart challenge and what you guys voted for in the episode about pick the next build. Uh, so that'll be very exciting. Tune in tomorrow for that. If you want to stay connected with BS for Build, head over to Facebook.com/slash BS for Build, and we are BS for Build on Instagram. If you like BS for Build and you like what we do, head over to bsforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop and pick yourself up a t-shirt or awesome hat like this or a key tag. All the proceeds of all of our merchandise go directly into supporting these builds. All right, that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace. Here we go.